Hello everyone. This video is going to discuss how to create an annular pilot or a ring pilot. The reason you want to do this is to uh, ensure that your central flow does not blow off on, on some type of Bunsen burners all contain or have generally a, a, ring, uh, a ring pilot that is fueled by the main flow line. But this burner has an annular pilot that is separately fueled from the central line so you can precisely control the central line uh, burner here and then put in a separate stream of gas here to generate an annular pilot. So in this annular pilot we're actually using a mixture of methane and oxygen uh, and you can use other things as well. What we have is a, what, this is just water cooling. Let's see if I can remove that real quick. So we have this, this insert or this cap that comes off. I should have loosened it before I made uh, started the video. So we have if we if we didn't have an annular pilot, we'd have this burner, just a straight tube. So we'd have just a straight tube, which is fine for laminar flames and slightly turbulent flames. But if you want to do high flow rates or high turbulent intensity flames, you need a pilot to anchor the flame on the nozzle itself, on the burner nozzle. Otherwise, the the flame will blow off. So the pilot is, consists of a number of pieces. So we have our main burner, we have a gasket to, to prevent uh, leakage out the bottom. We have this uh, where we feed the gas. So in here there is a slot. So um, I hold this down, it's hard to hold the camera and talk about this at the same time. I should have a pointer. Uh, I have a pencil, that'll do. So we have here is a swage lock fitting where we input the mixture, the gas mixture. It's already pre-mixed when we put it in. In this case, um, you might find it safer to input uh, the mixture not pre-mixed, but in this we're going to do it. So this is just the machined out to fit on the burner and the gasket. And then we have a ring machined out around the circumference so that the gas can distribute evenly around the, the diameter around the circumference before it exits the 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 top before it exits at the burner nozzle. Now you can put this on here uh, just like this and have a relatively stable pilot as long as your turbulent intensity isn't too high. Um, there is some issue with making sure this is actually on square since it's not a machine fitted. Uh, carbon gasket or something like that at the bottom. It's a rubber gasket. There is some tendency for this to get a little crooked and then you won't have a uniform flame. But you can get a very nice uh, pre-mixed or diffusion flame either way along this this ring. And this ring as it sits here is 10% of the area. The total area of the pilot is 10% of the total area of the burner. Now when you have high turbulent intensities this type of pilot will be blown off. Um, this this type of pilot here would use a, uh, a methane and air mixture. So what we wanted to do was make a stronger pilot. So we went to a methane and oxygen mixture. And so you can read in literature, some people use hydrogen or acetylene or something that burns very quickly, but uh, I'm afraid of using hydrogen, so I'm not using it. So I built an insert. So what this insert does is slide down in here and sit flush. I'm not going to move it in flush because I want to be able to move it out. So I have slots at the bottom to let the gas that entered into that ring that I pointed out before goes in through the slots in the bottom and then travels up through uh, along the length of this through I think there's eight slots around the circumference along the length. Then on a lathe, I mounted this in a lathe and cut I think it's about 50 thousandths of an inch. I can't remember how much I cut off the uh, the circumference here. Uh, if I if I get a chance, I'll grab some calipers and write it in the in the information below the video. But so I cut. That's too close to focus on. So I cut in this way uh, for about. 50 thousandths down down the di down the length and then I cut it in even farther so you had a tool in and then uh, a tool in even more and down 
so that there's a, a second groove here so that the gas that comes up through these slots in along the length hits the first groove and distributes evenly around the around the circumference because the drag associated with moving laterally is less than moving out of the very thin uh, nozzle exit. So that was the idea of cutting a non-uniform slot. So then we have uh, this very, very thin annular, annular slot which we're going to force out high speed methane and oxygen and get quite a nice uniform high temperature uh, ring around the main burner. So I'll add a video of this in action to the end of this because uh, it's not installed currently. So I hope you found this useful and have a good day. Just to clarify the, uh, the insert that I made, so if this is the, if, is the tube, the main tube, so if we had it just like this, this would be the outside wall, this would be the inside wall, another inside wall, outside wall, we line it up in a lathe, and then we, we cut off uh, a bit of material, and then we cut in deeper, remove even more material, and then remove the tool. So we have uh, an, opened, an open diameter at the top, a larger slot below that, and then the normal tube below. So we had to move, remove enough, a lot of material, but not enough to cut through the wall, and then less material at the actual tip so that the the pilot gas distributes evenly around the circumference of this slot and then comes out uniformly at the burner nozzle. Hello again, so I measured this with the caliper. It's uh, 62 75 thousandths or inches uh, in, on the nominal inside diameter and 64 20. So on the, the lathe part, so if you subtract this number from this number, this number from that number, then you can know what the removed material is. Now I'm not sure exactly how much I removed on the second groove in here because I did it by hand and couldn't get the automation on the lathe to work. I'm not quite uh, an exceptional machinist, so I did it as best I could. This is my fourth try and it seems to work pretty good. Now you can build a pilot without any machining at all. It's not nearly as pretty. Uh, so in, in this instance you can see a couple of things. One, there's a perforated plate down in the tube, so that's what's generating the turbulence in the burner. So you have, if this is stand up by itself, you have the input gas here, three concentric tubes. Uh, these tubes are there from smallparts.com. Uh, they are prototyping. It's prototyping tubing. So they 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 fit in each other like an like an old style antenna that you can move up and down or a pointer that you can extend. So you have a central tube which is the main burner. You have an alignment uh, an alignment tube that slides just around the outside diameter of this, and then the third tube is the actual outside of the pilot. So this this tubing is just water cooling and runs around the nozzle. And so you have you have to cut a hole in the side of the third tube and insert a fitting in the, I think it's 0.018 inch, inch separation distance between the, uh, the first tube and the third tube, or that's the, the thickness of the second tube. Uh, and glue it in place, I used epoxy and a, uh, a high temperature gasket used to make uh, head gaskets on motors. And then you can fit it in this way. So this was the first attempt to make sure this type of pilot would work and actually it was used in the first set of experimental data that was taken.